Do you own a car and once it suddenly broke down and you got stranded in the traffic jam or on the highway or you're afraid to have that experience? Today I'm gonna talk about 10 parts under the hood that you should check them yourself so that you can avoid such situations and to know why and how to do that, watch this video. Hello what's up everyone Anas here and before I start let me ask why is under the hood checkup so important? It is true that cars concept is inspired by nature but unlike animals that can heal their wounds over time, cars don't. And any issue will grow bigger gradually and cause damage to other parts if it wasn't diagnosed and fixed as soon as possible. So 5 minutes commitment every month to do a regular under the hood checkup is a great investment for your time and money so let's begin. If it's your first time to open the hood, first you should locate the hood release lever which you can find somewhere near the steering column or near the floor next to the driver's side door. It generally displays the word hood or a picture of the car's hood up. Just pull it. All hoods have a safety catch that stops the hood from completely opening. The purpose of the safety catch is to prevent the hood from accidentally coming open and blocking your vision while driving. Find the safety catch hook and move it to open the hood all the way up. On most vehicles you need to put the safety rod but on some other vehicles that have struts the hood should stay up on its own. In this case the struts are worn so I need to secure it with something. This tube will do. Alright so now we have access to what is under the hood of this car. I'm gonna explain how to properly check each of the 10 parts. Actually the order does not matter as long as we check all of them before we close the hood. Let's start with checking the engine air filter. Air filter extracts dirt from the air before it enters the intake system on your engine. By time it gets dirty and clogged which restricts the airflow through it and it will reduce the engine efficiency and result to higher fuel consumption. To inspect the air filter you need to locate the air filter housing. You can find it near the front bumper or on the top of the engine. On majority of cars removing the air filter housing cover is by simply unclamping it. But on this Land Cruiser model I need to unplug the mass airflow sensor and unclamp the rubber hose which is also an easy thing to do. Unclamp the cover and you will see the air filter inside. Just pull it out it's not fastened by anything. This is how a new and dirty air filters look like but if you still can't determine if it should be replaced there is an easy method. Just hold it up to a strong source of light. Can you see the light stream through? If not, it means the dirt is over accumulated in the filter and it's time to replace it. This filter is still okay. But the other one... Oh man, this is not okay. It looks like it's never been replaced since brand new. I'll tell the owner of this car to buy a new filter as soon as possible. And before we move to the next part, I have a few reminders. 1. Don't blow air through the filter to clean it. That would damage it. When it's so dirty, just buy a new one. 2. Normally air filters should be replaced every 20 to 30 thousand kilometers but they likely get clogged before then and that's why this inspection is necessary. 3. Don't forget to remove the dirt from the air filter housing before you replace the filter. Alright after we covered everything about inspecting the air filter let's move to the accessory belts. Did you know that AC compressor, cooling and electrical systems are all working by being driven by the accessory drive belts? And if an issue in the belt occurs, it will affect the function of those systems. Take a look at all the belts that drive the pulleys on the engine. You may have a V-shape or a serpentine belt type, which is one belt that drives all the pulleys. We have two things to inspect on the accessory belt. First, the condition of the belts. If the inside or outside is cracked or frayed, or if the inside is glazed or shiny, then the belt should be replaced as soon as possible. Second, the tension of the belt. In general, if you press on the belt, you shouldn't be able to move it more than half an inch. And when the belt is too loose, it will make a squealing sound like this. And now from the accessory belts to the battery. Who doesn't know the importance of batteries on cars, but the battery is like other car parts, it's subject to wear and tear. And to make sure it will supply the car with the electrical current without any unpleasant surprises, we have to inspect four things in the battery. One fluid level but if you have a battery which is maintenance free that means it's sealed and you can't monitor the fluid level inside but on other batteries you will see the fluid level indicator and the caps on the top if the fluid level is below the minimum the battery should be refilled i may publish a separate video about how to do that 
to the deposits on the terminals. Those deposits that you see in lovely colors are made by the battery acid. Don't touch those deposits since it's acid and may burn your hands if you accidentally touch it. If you see it on the battery, that should be cleaned as soon as possible. I'll include the proper way to clean it in the description of the video. 3. Check the battery cables and clamps to see if they are badly corroded. If so, you have to replace it otherwise the battery may short circuit and cause damage to other onboard computers. 4. Check the battery case and terminals. If you see big cracks on the case or damage on the terminals, replace the battery even if it's still working at that time. Next, let's move to the radiator. But before you touch anything related to the radiator, make sure the engine had cooled down first, otherwise you may burn yourself. The radiator is the most important part in the engine cooling system and to make sure it works in a good condition, you should inspect. 1. The coolant level and condition. To check this one, you don't have to open the radiator pressure cap. Just look for the recovery tank that's attached to the radiator by a small hose. You can see the maximum and minimum line indicator. Make sure it's up to the maximum line. Then you can open the cap to check the coolant condition. Some recovery tanks have the pressure cap on it, not on the top of the radiator. The coolant color is usually red, green, blue or yellow. If it looks rusty or has things floating, you need to flush the cooling system and add new coolant even if it's not time for that yet. Or if it looks oily, take your car immediately to a mechanic to check for the leak in the head gasket. 2. The front of the radiator should be checked and cleaned of bugs, dirt and mud that can restrict the air inflow and the heat dissemination. 3. Check the radiator hoses. The two big hoses you can see, the upper and the lower one. Fill it with your hand, it shouldn't be too soft or squishy, and you shouldn't see any cracks or bulges on it. If you're already wondering whether I forgot the engine oil dipstick, no I didn't. But have you ever asked yourself why do cars manufacturers always put an oil dipstick? The answer is because your car may lose engine oil due to a leak from some parts or an internal malfunction, and if the engine is running on low oil level, you will have to say goodbye to your car engine after some miles and you will end up with expensive repair bills. So to prevent the snowball from rolling bigger, we have the oil dipstick. And the correct way to check the oil level and in order to have an accurate reading, wait after the engine was shut down for at least 5 to 7 minutes so that most of the oil is drained back from the engine parts to the oil pan. Pull out the oil dipstick, wipe it with a clean tissue, then shove it back into its place then pull it out again and look at the film of oil on the end of the dipstick check how high the oil reaches on the dipstick it's normal to be a little lower than the maximum level in this case you can add oil but if it's lower than the minimum level then there is probably a leak that you should diagnose immediately when you put back the oil dipstick make sure to push it all the way down next to the engine oil dipstick is the automatic transmission fluid dipstick this step is not applicable to cars with manual transmissions as checking the fluid needs the car to be on a hoist to reach a plug. But if your car has automatic transmission it's so important to check the fluid and just like the engine if the transmission is running on low fluid it won't be too long before it gets a severe damage. To locate the automatic transmission fluid dipstick look towards the rear of the engine sticking out of the transmission or transaxle. To check the automatic transmission fluid in general case, you will have to start the engine and put the gear shift to park or neutral. While the engine is still running, pull out the automatic transmission fluid dipstick and wipe it with a clean tissue, then put it back and pull it out again and see the film of the fluid. If the automatic transmission fluid does not reach the full line, use a funnel and add some fluid. The automatic transmission fluid color should be red or light brown. If it's too dark or smells like burn, or if it has some particles, the transmission needs further inspection, and the fluid needs to be changed as soon as possible. If you add automatic transmission fluid, do not overfill, because the moving parts inside the transmission will create foam, and this foam will introduce air in the fluid, and it will reduce its ability of lubrication. Put back the automatic transmission fluid dipstick all the way down, and you're done. Next part is for the mechanical condition of your car and your own safety. What do you think it is? Of course it's the brake fluid. Brake fluid is the vital part in the braking system. 
When you press the brake pedal, the master cylinder forces the brake fluid through the brake lines to the drum or the disc brakes. If the master cylinder does not have enough fluid, air will get into the system and you will have a hard time to stop your car and that's a dangerous situation that happened to some people. If you do not wish to be in their place, inspect the brake fluid level when you do under the hood check. If you do not know where to locate the master cylinder, when you depress the brake pedal on the other side of the firewall is the vacuum brake booster and just in front of it sitting on and connected to the master cylinder. And on each stop, you can see the reservoir of the brake fluid. The fluid level should be between maximum and minimum. It's normal for the fluid level to drop a little bit as the brake pads wear. You can add some fluid and check again in two days. If you see the fluid level drops again, inspect the system for a leak. When you add brake fluid, don't overfill or let dirt get into the reservoir because that will cause damage in the hydraulic system. Always check the proper fluid type before you add. It's usually written on the cab of the master cylinder or on the owner's manual. Oh, don't tell me you're tired. Actually, we're almost done anyway. Next is power steering fluid. This is just easy and fast to inspect. You can see it on some recent cars with electronic power steering, which is equipped with an electric motor to help move the steering wheel. But cars that use the hydraulic system, the power steering fluid is so critical for the life and function of the steering system. Locate the power steering fluid reservoir. It usually is marked with the steering wheel column or it says power steering on the cab. On some cars the power steering cab is attached to a dipstick. On other cars like this it's enough to check the level indicator from the outside of the reservoir. Add power steering fluid if you need to. Check it again in two days. If it's low again you need to inspect for a leak in the power steering system. 9. Hoses and wires. Fill every hose that you encounter under the hood. It shouldn't be too soft or squishy, nor hard or too dry. Look for cracks or fluids dripping out of the hose's surface. If you see any, replace the hose immediately. Replacing a hose is cheap and easy and it will save you a lot of time, money and effort compared to the case when it suddenly breaks. For wires, don't mess with them. Just visually inspect them and if you see bright metal is visible out of the insulator or if it looks corroded, it should be replaced immediately as well. Then and last one is windshield washer fluid. Look at the small tank under the hood. It's marked with windshield wiper icon. Make sure it's full. You can use water or special fluids in the market. That has antifreeze if you live in cold countries. Or you can make the fluid at home. But always make sure you don't run out of windshield washer fluid. Now we're done with under the hood checkup. It took me a while to explain everything. But once you know it, it won't take more than 5 minutes of your time to do it every month. But doesn't it feel great? Now you're reasonably confident that your car has what it needs to operate properly, feel more confident about the condition of your car, and remove that anxiety of the sudden breakdowns. Now your car knows that you care for it and it will serve you better for sure. Try doing under the hood checkup on your own car and leave me your thoughts in the comment section below the video. If you like this video, remember to give a thumbs up, and if you did not subscribe yet, consider subscribing to the channel. And always stay safe.